What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. We are here today with an unfiltered edition with a very special guest, Mr. Leo Costa. Leo, thank you so much for being here. It's truly an honor to have you on. Uh, thank you for having me, Jerry. I appreciate it. Now, for those of you, many of you probably already know exactly who I'm talking to right here when you see him. Some of you that don't, you know about the Big Beyond Belief Series Growth 3, which not only do I still use the principles nowadays, but I send many of you to a free PDF with those. And that's Leo's book. Leo's, I remember seeing the ads in, you know, muscular, uh, was it muscular development, muscle mag, whatever. And it had you and Tom Platts in the gym training. I remember seeing the pictures, following it. And I literally, like, no joke, when I say this, a lot of people will say, yeah, I used to have that book. No, here I still have the actual spiral bound copy of Big Beyond Belief. Yeah. I have all the um, the newsletters. I subscribe to the newsletter, Serious Growth News. I tried the supplements. I used the um, IGF-33. Okay. I used the, yeah. uh, um, the it's creatine you guys had, which is called Energix. I used Trivastin. Yeah. I used all of that stuff. I was a big believer and still am of your training principles. So thank you very much for coming out with that. Yeah, cool. Thanks for, uh, you know, we have some really awesome followers, let me tell you. Now, the, uh, the only one I couldn't really find was the Serious Growth um, Buggy and Burst Training System. So I have the Serious Growth 3. I have Titan Training. Was there ever a Serious Growth 2 or... There was a there was a Bulgaria burst that was serious growth, big beyond belief, and then uh, Titan training. Okay, Titan training. So now there's another one coming out too soon, right? Uh, well, we're working on something that's yeah down the road. Awesome, very cool. Now I also want to touch upon like you guys are doing stuff with supplements back then that I mean way ahead of your time. The Tripistan, which is a testosterone increaser, the um, uh, right. the Energix, which was a creatine phosphate, those little vials that you push the top down. And it was like a powder that you drank. And you guys had the supplements. And I've talked to Phil Hernan, who's a very close friend of mine, about the supplements that were serious growth and critical mass and how great they were. But, you know, Phil was saying they were so expensive to produce. Yeah, the thing about that was what a lot of people don't know, the consumer, is that the FDA allows you to put so much filler in a product and still say that you have that whatever supplement that you're putting in, the vitamin or mineral, you don't really know how much filler that there, there is in those products. Right. And we learned that. So we said, okay, in order for you to get the, the, the maximum benefit from that supplement, this is what you have to have. We worked with, with formulators, and this is what they told us, you know. And they said, that other stuff, it's got a lot of filler to it. So, you know, those people would have to use, I think back then we, we figured out it was like three times more to get the same amount as what we had. But when you look at the bottle, Things really small yeah. compared to a giant tub. You know, consumers buy with their eyes, and not necessarily really knowing what's in that product. And that that's what went on. So it was a good idea, and it was a good, very good product, but it fell short just because of the the cost of it. Yeah. And I remember I switched from because the amino that came with a drink before it was called Critical Mass, and Serious Growth was after the workout. And you took I think I believe yeah. it was like six tablets that were these hydrolyzed aminos. So what I did was like when it stopped being produced, I actually looked for hydrolyzed aminos, and I found them. From this one company, they sent me a jar that looked like the size of a gallon jug with these giant yeah. pills, and the serving size was like 18 of them to get the same that you guys had in six. And I was trying right. to compensate by taking 18 of those aminos that everybody used to take that were like the size of your thumb, and I just couldn't do it. It was just it was impossible, so it just kind of fell by the wayside. But again, back yeah. then, you guys were already doing peri workout, pre and after um, workout supplements, yeah. which is way before the time that people are doing them nowadays. Um, yeah. So, Optimum Training Systems, is that something you're still involved in, or is that company not around anymore? Oh, yeah, we're, yeah. yeah, we're still doing it. Yeah, we are, uh, we're into the uh, self-defense market uh, pretty big. I actually ordered then, that um, Street Smart. I ordered that, too. I had that, too. too. Everything you guys produced, I bought, pretty much. So. Yeah, and then we're going to come back, and we've been working on some ideas for, uh, for our new product, um, you know, for bodybuilding again, but uh, we're just not quite ready for that. Awesome. Not just... So I also got your new book, and I've only read pieces of it so far. And there was some stuff that I didn't know because, you know, back then the Internet wasn't a big thing, so you don't hear news as fast as you do now. And if you didn't read right. it in one of the muscle magazines, you didn't hear it at all. And this is the new book, Three Strokes in Three Weeks. Now, last I had heard of, you um, were retired from from competing. And then you, in the book I read you decided to make a comeback. And I was like, well, I had no, I didn't know about the comeback. And that's what led to the, the health problems that you were having then. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. Well, it was, I took 13 years off, and I decided, like I usually do, I got a wild hair, and I just wanted to see. My main thing was I wanted to see about the, you know, we talked about that muscle has memory. 
And I wanted to test it for myself. I mean, all the stuff that I've done in the past has always been based on firsthand experience before I go on and tell other people, you know, how to do this or what I think is going to happen. I did that with Bulgarian births and all of them. And so the same thing here. I was very curious about coming back at the age of 53. I think I was at 53. I wanted to see what kind of shape I could get my body back into. So I did that. And I, interestingly enough, uh, you know, my first show back, I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't back to where I was when I was, you know, back in the heyday. But I figured I needed one more uh, competition, you know, go through that off season, And I, I would have had it. The, the shape that I was actually in, I was actually leaner than I was when I was younger at the age of 41. But the muscle mass was off just a little bit. And I knew I, I could get it. I was close. I was close enough that I, I needed one more year, you know. But then I had these, this trouble with these uh, with these strokes, and that just obviously it sidelined me. So do you feel like as you get older, because you're saying like you were leaner, do you feel like the skin gets thinner as you get older? Well, I'll tell you what. In my case, it actually did. I mean, I was in, you know, I definitely was leaner. That wasn't, you know, the, the muscle size wasn't there, but I was close. I, I knew I needed one, maybe two more years to be back at that level, you know. Now, how were you training when uh, you had taken that time off? Were you just still doing the same type of training, or was it something totally different? Yeah. Uh, different well, training. the thing what I've done is, is I, and here at my gym, I have a personal training studio. And what I did here is I came up with a program. I call it RAMP. And it's just something I played around with. And it, basically what I did is I took the information that I learned from the all this, the training courses that I produced for bodybuilding, I wanted to think outside the box. I would kind of wipe the slate clean. One of the things that uh, when I went over to, to Europe where I learned a lot in Bulgaria, those guys were all about thinking outside the box. Kind of wiping the slate clean, you know, learn from the the uh, applying what you're wanting to do as opposed to you know, looking at the information that's out there. You know, they did it in reverse. Instead of theory first and then application, they did application first and then theory because that kept them from being hamstrung by any kind of information, good or bad. So I did the same thing. I just took stuff that was I already had done. I took stuff that I learned from uh, Vince Gironda, Tom Platts, and then I just went to the gym, and I just kind of created my own uh, training program. And it, it wasn't really anything that was uh, – I didn't reinvent the wheel. I just took the information that was out there and put it into a, a program that worked for me at that time. And I have to tell you, for me – it was the hardest workout that I've ever done, and that includes the, the some of the stuff that we did with uh, serious growth and all that. And that stuff was hard. I mean, it was difficult. But this was right there with that. It was very difficult, and at one point, I didn't know if I could actually make it and, and continue with that kind of workout. Fortunately, my body had adapted. It took about six weeks or so. My body finally adapted to that, that style of training that I was doing, and I just went from there. And I really thought I was on to something uh, with that. Now, you know, this is separate kind of from what we're doing uh, with, uh, the, you know, the uh, serious growth uh, books. But it's, I mean, some of that stuff would apply. It's just something I did on my own, you know, and, and I tried it. And I think it worked very well. The one thing that I've taken away from um, serious growth and all the optimal training stuff was the optimal training zone and the, yeah. um, the way that they would deload using active recovery. So yeah. it's never actually just like time off. It was like the active recovery you drop back to in the ramping up. And then, um, so they call it, it was ramp one. So you'd ramp up and then you'd back off for X amount of yeah. weeks. And that's like accelerate, accelerate, adaptation. Yeah, adaptation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What I've learned over time was like the, um, whatever weeks it was in the book, like the more progression that you get, it could be the shortened time or longer time. Like it was really hard for me to get the instinctual training down. But once I figured that out, that was like, seemed to be like the next thing towards, it becomes from the book, the charts are gone. Like you can actually feel. Yeah. So it sounds like what you did literally was the instinctive training, feeling how things were going and developing yeah. these new things, which um, is amazing. Now, one thing I ask is, did you ever try the Platt style training? Like walk through workouts with Platt's where he would do those crazy things like picture he was Pac-Man, you know, eating the little things, every rep, like. Yeah, he was scary. Uh, when I, he actually took me from uh, the regional level to getting into more of the world, and, you know, national and then world level. It was Tom. I mean, I went down to, uh, I don't know if you heard the story, but I went down to, uh, this is after I, I connected with Tom, you know, because he, I, I hired Tom for, for the uh, the book that I hired him for was, uh, I think it was, it might have been Big Beyond Belief. Yeah. Yep. And he came on board and 
You know, this is when I learned the ropes kind of from Tom. I mean, traveling and how he dealt with people. And I saw a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen at that point because he took me into this whole new world where the pros were. And so at that point, I told Tom, I said, look, you know, I want to compete at the next level. And this is as far as I've been able to get on my own. And he took me under his wing. And I, I basically lived down in Venice Beach. I lived in a little hotel there called Marine Pacific Hotel. At that time, that's kind of where a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, people stayed there, a lot of Europeans stayed there, close to Gold's Gym. And I trained with Tom. And I'm going to tell you something. Everything you read about him was true. I mean, he literally scared me when we were training to train with each other because he, when Tom got into a zone, I could see it in his eyes. I mean, he, it's like a, a switch that flipped, and I, and I knew it, you know. It's like, you better hold on because it's going to be intense. Yeah, all that stuff was, it was crazy. But... Uh, you know, he got me to that next spot. Now, your program I actually picked up when my training, so my training partner from when we, I was 17 is probably, he's definitely going to watch this. I know he is. So what's up, Donnie? When we used your program, we were 17, 18 years old, 19 years old, and we were getting bigger and stronger than the other teenagers in the area. And I don't know, so the, the book, your book doesn't really talk much about it, but it talks a little bit about steroids. When Donnie and I decided to take that leap, I mean, we just blew right past everybody, even that was on the stuff. And People that had taken stuff were asking us, like, what were we doing? And we would walk around with this book. And we were like, this is how we're training. And they would tell us it's not enough volume. It's not enough training. It's not enough. And literally, I went from 173 to over 230 pounds in 10 weeks, which I didn't know yeah. at the time. But that's abnormal for somebody, even if they start taking steroids. And I was using that program. Donnie and I were using that program. We continued to use that until we evolved to that next level where it was like you did the level two training. And then you're starting to use the higher reps and stuff like that. Now, did you feel like the programs were and are a good substitute for steroids? Yeah, it, uh, because, you know, one of the things that, and this is just being very honest, I, well, I prided myself, as a company, we prided ourselves on doing this natural. I trained naturally until I got to the point where I just couldn't uh, do it anymore and compete with the guys that were there. That's just a hard truth right. that I was faced with. But, no, I think that that program, that was the next best thing to take a steroids, and a lot of people are, are, are they have the same story that you're talking about. They claim that people would say, hey, you know, what are you on? They got it happened more than one time, yeah. you know, it happened a lot of times. So, yeah, the program I think was about as close as you could get to, to you know, adding that, that, uh, and adding the steroid program, if you will. And I also, you know, we use the anabolic diet, which um, that was my introduction to the quote unquote cycloketogenic diet or the keto diet. I knew of Dan Duchesne, but I really dove into it with Marlo Di Pasquale. And um, if you Google like bodybuilder or keto or something like that, my name and my videos pop up usually first because I've been yeah. using a type of the anabolic diet off and on through, you know, since 1995 when I get the programs. Now, is that similar to the way you eat now or how, how have things changed from then to now as far as how you eat? Uh, basically now I eat more of a, uh, a diet that's uh, well, actually the keto diet. It was funny. I just read this the other day. The keto diet is actually very good for inflammation. Now, when somebody has strokes like I had, you know, your body gets very inflamed. Right. And it's really not much different except for it's just more acute. It's not much different than when you're training because your body gets inflamed from training. So that, that high-fat diet or that keto diet is actually a very good diet to be on. Uh, I've made some changes uh, because my concern was that after this happened to me, um, you know, uh, the funny, hit, little, funny little story, when I... Uh, when I was training, I never had any issues with um, hernias or anything like that. I got a hernia after being having any strokes because I was paralyzed on my right side. I was I had a I never trained any harder in any program that I did than trying to rehab the side that was paralyzed, you know. And from that, I got a hernia. Crazy enough, and I was just basically that was just raising my own body weight. I wasn't even doing any weights at that particular time. Right. So. I went to the doctor because they said, you know, you got to get this thing fixed, but because of the fact that you've had these strokes, we have to do a cardiac clearance testing on you to make sure that you can go under anesthesia. So I did that, and, you know, it was kind of a new base for me as far as what my health really was because the crazy thing about that, when I was in the hospital after having these strokes, I was, I was about three months or, uh, how, I'm trying to think how far I was, I was about maybe a month away or six weeks away from another show. I was, I was dying for a show. And when I was in the hospital, the doctor said, well, you shouldn't be here because there's nothing wrong with you based on all the tests that they did. 
you know, and I, I, I admit, at that point in my career, I had been using stuff, okay? Right. I'm not going to, you know, lie about that. Uh, that was a choice that I made. But because people said when that happened to me, I heard, well, it's because of the stuff that he was right. doing, you know, people automatically start making their own conclusions. Right. But the truth of the matter is, when I was laying in that hospital bed, the doctor said, have you done this, these steroids before? I said, yeah, I have. And right now, I'm in a, I was in a downtime. I was, you know, I'd cycle in and out. Yeah. I said, I'm not doing it now because he said, nothing wrong with your heart, nothing wrong with your, your arteries, nothing, liver, nothing. There was nothing wrong with me. That was almost worse than him telling me that there was something right. that caused, you know. So it wasn't, I, I don't condone the use of the of steroids. I don't. But I'm just saying to, to, to make sure that things are accurate. Those weren't exactly in the cell were the reasons why I ended up there. That lifestyle, that bodybuilding lifestyle is very extreme in every possible way. Right. At, that, at that point, when you take a look where I was at, I was sleeping about three hours a day. I'm running business, two businesses at that time. Wasn't sleeping, training like a wild man. Jerry, I, I, I was training with more intensity then than I was in my, when I was 40 years old because it meant something different to me. I got another shot to do this, and I was really doing it for more, even more joy than I was before, you know? So I was training like a beast, I was stressed out because of work, you know, working all the time and not sleeping. That shut me down. Am I gonna tell you that the steroids helped the matter? No, but in itself, they weren't the reason. I just wanna be clear about that, right. you know? So anyway, getting back to this doctor thing. So I go to the doctor, doctor says now, he goes, okay, well, you know, for somebody your age, they're, you know, you're only 35% blocked, which I thought that was a lot, right. you know, overall blocked. And the doctor said, no, we don't start, uh, you know, uh, giving medication or stents till people are about 70% blocked, which oh, I wow. thought was unbelievable. But when I walked away from that, uh, that testing, I thought, you know something, 35% to me, I, I'm an athlete, I was, I was competitive. I'm going to see if I can reverse that heart disease by just simply changing my diet around a little bit. Because at that point, I was just on a basic uh, glucose diet, okay? I had my protein when I was training. I wasn't doing the high-fat diet then. Yeah. I just did a regular glucose diet, made sure I was, I was taking about two grams of protein for one pound of body weight at that point. But after this happened, I decided to change things around a little bit. So what I did from one year to the next, after the doctor told me where I was, uh, and I, I basically ate a paleo diet, and I made a blend, okay? I did a little twist on that paleo. And, of course, I think you know what the paleo diet is. It's the caveman diet, yep. okay? So what I did is kind of like what I did with my high-fat diet when I was uh, the anabolic diet, where I would do five days, I did the high-fat diet, and on the weekends I would carb load, right. ate whatever I want. So what I did is I had the paleo diet Monday through Friday, and then on the weekend. I ate whatever the hell I want, because that's that was my style of eating. I like to eat on the weekends. I don't I don't want to worry about weighing my food or anything like that. Right. I did that for a whole year, a modified paleo. I called that. I went back to the doctor the following year. I did the very same testing that I did the year before. The doctor says, amazingly, you have reversed your heart disease. In other words, there's less than thirty-five percent blocked now. Huh. Yeah, I, that's what I said. <laughs> this, is how, this is how powerful a diet can be, you know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the high fat diet because, you know, I just read the other day, and, and, you know, the anti-inflammation diet. Right. Carbohydrates are the issue. For guys like me now that have had these issues or people that have problems in their joints, it's carbohydrates that are, that are inflaming the, the person. You take the carbs in or, or eat the right kind of carbs, you know, adding fat to carbs makes that a better carb. All of a sudden, it drops the inflammation in your body. Right. So, but with me, to answer your question for that show, I was doing your basic glucose diet. It just made sure I had my protein uh, where I needed it to be, and then I filled in with the rest. Now, over the years, and um, again, I, I kind of I, doing the same thing that you did. I actually, I kind of learned it from that as experimenting, which I found out that Deep Pasquale's diet gave you a very broad variety of foods to eat in it, and like salami, hot dogs, just the most random stuff, right? And over the years, um, I kind of experimented more and more, and I upped the protein a little bit. Now, too much protein turns into glucose, but what's too much? Like the athlete who trains harder and is bigger needs more protein than the average person. So, of course, you're going to need more protein. Maybe not the two pounds per, but let's say 
you know, 1.25 pounds or two grams per pound of body weight. So I upped the protein, dropped the fat slightly, but I changed the fats from saturated fats to poly, poly and mono, like almonds, uh -huh. macadamia nut oil. And I found that that worked even more efficiently and better than the quote unquote high fat diet. So like I right. just, you know, kind of went with what I felt and I, you know, worked with my clients with it and we did blood work and, you know, everything turned out good. And now they literally just came out with a study and says that the hard training individual needs more protein on the high fat diets. And they also came out with another study saying that the types of fat that you take in make a difference as to how your body obviously uses them. So it's like, I mean, there's so many different things out there, but they're just not studying them. And they're coming around little by little. They're, they're figuring it out now. So three strokes in three weeks, that's, I mean, when I heard that, right, when when your um, um, Joe had told me that, your I guess he's your PR guy, Joe. Yeah, your PR guy. He's been yeah. with me for forever. He came from New York and showed up at my doorstep in Visaya, and ever since then we've been together on some level. But yeah, he's he's together. PR We're guy. working on a project together right now with the with the magazine. Yeah. So he you know told me that you had the three strokes in three weeks, and I kind of stepped back and I was like, you know, how is he? And, you know, you seem completely healed to me. I mean, I don't know if there's any lasting effects or anything like that. But what, what I mean, I read when you were in the gym and you felt the first stroke come on and you felt dizzy and you were off balance. And rather than calling 911, you jumped in the truck and drove home because you wanted to be at home. Yeah. Um, right. What was running through your mind? Were you like, you know, this is a stroke? Or was it just like something like blood glucose is dropping or like? Yeah, you know, so I'm an athlete, man. When this thing hit me, I was, I was training some clients at my other gym. And all of a sudden, this thing came, like, came through my body. And I knew there was something different, you know? Right. But I just thought, you know, I just, just got to shake this thing off a little bit. Just probably a virus coming through. I, I mean, how could I possibly think of the stroke? My goodness. I mean, here I am, you know, training all my life. And that was the last thing I would have thought of, you know? So I actually, when it happened to me at the gym, I actually trained and finished my client. I just said, <laughs> you know, I just got to, you know, just I'll train you from here. But then what I started noticing was it was like a domino effect. And for me, I noticed it when I, I had a foot up on the bench, you know, kind of leaning on my, my knee and instructing that client. When I went to step down, Jerry, I couldn't find the ground. Wow. I, I, my foot, I was like, what the heck is going on here? And then it was just like it traveled up my body. Uh, I could feel something coming on, and I was losing function. And that's when I decided, you know what? I'm going to go home. I mean, that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do because I drove uh, from there. I drove probably 15 minutes uh, to home. By the time I got home, I could already see I was done. I mean, I got into the into the house and I literally fell into my into my house and my wife had to drag me. I mean, it was a mess. I still didn't go because I said, no, I'll be OK. I, and I couldn't talk very well, but she was trying to get me to go and I'm stubborn that way. You know, I'm going to be okay. And finally, she, she called my sons. They were in town. My oldest son, they, they came over, and it's a good thing they got me in that uh, ambulance because I got to the hospital within four hours of when it happened, and I was eligible for that TPA, that clot-busting medication that they put in your arm. Yeah. And the doctor said, if this works for you, uh, in two and a half days, you're going to walk out of here like nothing happened, or... It could kill you because what happens is is you bleed out. Right. If I had any kind of tears from training, I mean that's that is kind of like the which is a hell of a thing to be faced with when you're there all jacked up. Right. But I knew at that point I did not want to be like that. So I told my my sons were there. I said sign the paper because I couldn't because yeah. I don't want to be like this. Well, I went in on a Thursday, uh, Jerry Sunday. I walked out of the hospital like nothing ever happened. Unbelievable. Shocking. It was unbelievable. And the doctor there, and again, this is that now the doctor said, look, there's nothing wrong with you, but you had these strokes. At that point, I had two. I had two back-to-back, -back, okay? Those are the first two that I had. And the doctor said, look, you've, had, you've been assaulted. You don't realize when you have a stroke how, how much of an assault it is on your body, especially your brain. I had an ischemic uh, stroke. And the doctor said, look, no more bodybuilding for you. you got to go home. And you have to rest four to six weeks. When he told me that, this is how crazy you get when you're when you have bodybuilding mentality. When he told me that, I thought he was insane. I thought he must be talking to somebody who's average. You know, not me. Not me. I'm an athlete. I've been training forever. You know, for 20 years almost at this point. And you're telling me that I got to go home and and for four to six weeks, 
I said, okay. I, I went back to the gym after a week because I felt fine. And I made a promise to myself. I said, I'm going to kind of listen to the doctor. I, I reduced my workload to nothing. I mean, I was at the gym just for about three hours. The workout that I was doing, I'm just going to call it like Flash used to call it when he was uh, out of the sport. He said, I'm just an old guy having fun in the gym, you know? I was going very easy and just to see how my body was responding to that. Not, I mean, Jerry, it was a, such a lightweight workout. It was pathetic. Really, I'm not exaggerating <laughs> that. And I just, because I was, hey, look, it shook me. Yeah. And I thought, hey, you know, after about two weeks, I thought, I'm, I think I'm going to be okay. Well, three weeks to the day. Because the first, the first stroke, is the first two, that, the first one that hit me, I had no clue. The third one, I was training a client here in my other studio, and I felt this thing coming on. I told my client, I go, hey, I'm having my third stroke. I'll see you later. Oh, wow. And I went again myself to the hospital. I did fine. I parked in the perfect parking, but I could feel my body shutting down again. And the very same thing happened. I was paralyzed on my right side again. This time, I had to rehab naturally. They couldn't give me the treatment because it was too soon. They give those things once every three months. But I knew. On the third one, I knew exactly what was going on. That third one, I'm convinced, was because I came back too soon. Even though I was doing nothing, really, yeah. it was just too soon. I, I kind of uh, describe it as kind of like when an earthquake happens, you have all these after effects for a while. Yeah. My body hadn't settled down at all. And I was back in the gym. I just wanted to get back to normal again, you know, to yeah. get back to training again. Back to the routine. It was too soon. Yeah, it was too soon. I, so I had a, that one there, that time I stayed home four to six weeks. Now, no, I take that back. I stayed home four months mm -hmm. before I came, came back to the gym again. I did all my rehab at home and I, I took a whole different approach. Now, is there anything you do now that, or I mean, obviously, is there a possibility that strokes could happen again? Is it a genetic thing? Have they figured out what oh, it was well, in the first place? Well, it can be a, it can be a genetic thing, but what it is more than anything else is managing risk factors. Because if you take a look, here, here's the thing that I did, and here's I here's why I believe I got better. Because 90 percent of us that have these live with a lifelong impairment, right. and only 10 percent make a full recover of 100 percent recovery. It's pathetic out there. What's going on? But there's some reasons why this is happening. It reminds me very much of when I first came into the bodybuilding scene. You know, the stuff that I brought back from Europe, it wasn't all, you know, what we did more than anything else was put things into a formula, okay? It wasn't like we re reinvented anything as much as we put things into a formula after learning about things that I learned about in Bulgaria. Well, in the stroke world, so the, the, the information in the bodybuilding world 20 years before was kind of fractured. Right. When you go out and you talk to some of the people out there, you would get 10 different answers as to what was the best way to train. And surprisingly, some of these pros didn't even know how they were training. Right. You know, they just didn't. They were so instinctive, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. You know, they, they, were, they were getting results, but they didn't really know how. And this is where we came in with our bodybuilding courses because we put things into that optimal training range, a formula. Well, when I went out and after these shows happened to me, because of my enthusiasm to find out why this happened. How did this happen to me? Right. I mean, the doctor did tell me that 40% of the people that have strokes, they, they appear to be in shape and they work out. So, you know, you don't get a pass because you're working out right. and you appear to be healthy. The number one reason people have strokes is because of high blood pressure. Blood pressure the yeah. number one reason. My wife and, is going to uh, love you for saying that. My wife's a cardiovascular CVR nurse. She does open heart surgery, bypasses. And um, she's constantly on me about my blood pressure, especially I'm 41 now. Yeah, the number one reason is blood pressure. Now, you combine that with being stressed out. Listen, our body can handle stress. It's just if you overtrain it, just like with training, okay? There's, a, there's such a correlation with what happened to me. If you go into the gym and train, uh, you know, two hours at a time, well, your body can't recover. At that point, you're overtraining, all right? It was the same thing here. Your, your body can handle stress if you don't overtrain it. It's built, it's designed to handle that. Right. Okay, it can do that. But it's just when you overdo everything. Well, with me, it was that's where I was. I had overdone everything, and my, you know, not only was I did I have a high blood pressure because I knew that when I used to compete, when I get up heavier, my blood pressure went up. I knew that. And then now I'm I'm older, which is a genetic, which is a, a risk factor. Right. So I'm older, I have high blood pressure for me, 300 pounds or 280, you know, and then stress. Those are all risk factors. 
you know? And so the key is controlling your risk factors and then knowing what the heck to do when something like this happens to you. How do you tell somebody who's healthy like I was and like you are that you should be mindful of this? You know, we, we seem to learn more as a, as a human after the fact. Right. When something shakes you like it did me, okay, it got my attention. And so I had to go out and like I did with my training, I was very enthusiastic. So I, went, I, went, I wanted to find out everything about the stroke. The stroke was my enemy. I want to know everything about my enemy. And I started finding out these risk factors. I started finding out the things that I could do to control that by lowering my inflammation in my body, learning how to deal with stress. And what I've done now with my stress, because I'm still stressed out from my work, right. but I compartmentalize. I compartmentalize things now, Jerry. It's not like the whole, you know, I'm not stressed out constantly. It's like stressing out your body in the gym constantly and not allowing your body to recover. It's a hard thing to do when you have have the mentality of a of a warrior of a of an athlete. You know, I think yeah. you can probably relate to that. Absolutely. Sometimes you, you you can hurt yourself because you're you so focused that you override. I mean, I was getting before all this happened to me. I was already getting warning shots. Yeah. I had adrenal burnout. Ah, you know, <laughs> just, kind of, just tough it up. <laughs> I had a competition to go to. Right. right. No, I actually, you know, um, Rich Piano was a good friend of mine who passed away recently, and um, he was 46, and he was sitting around like, you know, 330, 340 pounds. He had got himself down to like 260, and um, when he passed away, it was due to a heart problem, you know, and, you know, at this point at 41, I haven't competed in bodybuilding. I did physique for a couple of years, but bodybuilding I left behind in 2013, so I knew I was getting a little bit older. I didn't want to push the drugs anymore. I knew to get to the next level, I'd have to take the drugs even further. And yeah. even though you know you're going to hurt yourself, you're too old, I've torn my pec, my rotator cuff, my, I'm like, maybe I got one more bodybuilding show left in me. Now they have exactly. a new you know, division, classic physique. It wouldn't be as stressful. Bullshit. Like, you're absolutely going to go full force. And whatever you took for yeah. the other one, you'll take for this one. And I have to keep reeling myself in and having, like, talks with myself over time saying, look, it might work out, but there's, like, a 99% chance that it might not work out. Like, you might hurt yourself yeah. this time. you got to wait easy by not – getting hurt, doing the other stuff that you did. I played with insulin. I played with all these different types of things. You got away health in your life. Like, stop. You know, like that mentality, I really believe. You know, even when you go to the gym, I'm sure there are days that you're, you're working out, you're like, I feel pretty good. Maybe I should just give it a little, throw a little more weight on there and you got to talk yourself out of it and stuff like that. Constantly, constantly fighting that. Yeah. You know, it's a constant battle. And like I tell people, I said, I'm trained this way. I've been doing this for, you know, hey, Derek, during the week, I still weigh my food. Mm -hmm. On the weekend, I don't, but that's the way I've been doing it for years. Uh, as a bodybuilder, I don't came in. You know, I get hungry like the rest of the people. I right. never came. Yeah. Never came. Yep. I'm praying that way. It doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter that I'm hungry. You know, I, it's hard. It's really hard to translate this over to, to clients that you train right. that are more for fitness because, you know, doing that show, as you know, it takes you to a whole nother level and yeah. it's a crazy level sometimes. It really is. Sometimes you hurt yourself because of that. It changes your frame yeah. of mind, you know. And you like I, yeah. you know, I couldn't think about possibly eating a, a meal that didn't have protein, carbs, and fats in it. Like some people yeah. will just have like what they call a snack. It's just like a handful of like potato chips. I, yeah. I can't do it. I just I can't rationally. If I have potato chips, I gotta have a protein drink with it because I have to exactly. make sure. And it's weird because I don't have to do that anymore. But you know, I guess bottom line is I just enjoy it. I enjoy living yeah. that way, so that I just do it. You know. I'm just I'm so trained that way that I just. If I don't do that, I'm just not right. It just doesn't work for me. That's all, period. So I'd just rather just do it, just you know, go that way. And then I know on the weekends, I got that to look forward to. And I have a good time. Well, I would love to have you, know, you on eat. again and talk about like stuff like you know the, the paleo diet that you're talking about, the five on, two, uh, the five on, two off. I really want to talk about that. Um, and I also would like to know more about your ramp. It's not ramp, but what you're doing now, getting ready to come out with that too. Is the book out right now? Uh, no, Every, everything okay. is just still on the, you know, uh, on the shelf. No, we, nothing's come out. Okay, so I, I guess I'm, I was lucky. I thought it was already out. So here's the book, guys. And when this comes out, I guarantee you that this is something that you're going to enjoy when you pick this up, especially if you're an Optimal Training Systems and Leo Costa fan. I, honestly, like, I didn't know what happened. You know, like, I wasn't keeping up with things because, you know, online, if you, you know, look up, you know, there's still some training stuff of you and stuff up, but there really wasn't a whole lot about this. And when, you know, Joe told me about it, I was like, yeah. I mean, if Leo wants to come on the show, absolutely, let's do it. And um, yeah, I would, you know, I would absolutely love to be involved with anything if you're testing programs, 
or you're testing things, you want somebody out on the East Coast, I mean, you let me know and I'm down. Like, I'm such a big fan. You have no idea, Liam. Okay, cool. I appreciate that. And where can people find you if they want to get a hold of you? Uh, you can go. I have a, a website called Automatic Diet Plus. Okay. This is a new uh, uh, thing that I have just recently launched. It's an app. And it's nothing more than an extension of my my training uh, programs here at the gym. And it applies, Jerry, to literally everyone. This app is a, it's based around the three uh, components, weight training, cardio, nutrition, because you know, the hardest part of, of, of those components is the diet, for the most part, for most people. You don't know so why I'm I laughing, do you? You have no idea why I'm laughing, do you? So, I don't know why the light came on one day, but I did this seminar for my people. And I thought, why did I do this before? So what I did is I created this app called ADP. So Automatic Diet Plus is where you can get a hold of me at this website. And it's an app that basically, it's a health and lifestyle app that basically uh, manipulates those three components for people. So when people come on, and these, this is for people that can't uh, either afford to do a personal trainer or that I have people from out of the state that are on this thing. Yeah. And because of my bodybuilding background, I know that you're, your physiology has a natural rhythm before it hits a plateau. I know that. I know how many calories it takes for you to maintain uh, weight, whether you're a female or a male, to maintain, lose, or gain weight. I already know that number. And then what I did is I created this app around a um, – the diet is around foods that you like to eat. Because, Jerry, the only diet that works is the one that you stay on. Yes. And I go on, I go on programs, you know, I just came off a TV program, and I, they have these bullets that I, you know, they want to talk about. My first bullet is, I say, diet programs that are out there, and this includes weight training and cardio, are designed to fail. She looked at me, and she says, what do you mean? I said, well, if you take a little look at the stats, for example, with the diet, uh, with some of these, I'm not going to name them, but people know the diets that you buy that are pre-done for you, that come to your doorstep. Okay, if you take a look at the stat on that and what how people uh, how they do those diets is they buy that diet until they reach their goal, so they do get results. But if you take a that look at that very same person eight months down the road, they're in worse shape than they were before they started the program because they didn't learn anything. You know, it's it's designed to fail because they keep coming back to it. They get short term results and they keep coming back to it. I don't. That's not the mark of a good program. So what I did with this, as I said, and, and the other reason why people fail on programs like that is because you have to eat those foods. So what happens when you go out and socialize on the weekends? What's going to happen then? So that there's always there's so many reasons why they fail, but they're mainly because they're short-term. They have no long-term structure. So I took this ADP, and I said, okay, look, you can eat whatever. You can eat the foods that you like if you know how many calories you're taking in and you have enough protein in your diet. Right. And if I knock down those barriers for you, and I create a diet that's based more on the foods that you like to eat, if I can actually do that, and I can, you're going to stay on that longer. And now what I do is, because I know it takes about four weeks before your body hits a plateau, and by the way, you need to hit a plateau to be efficient. These programs that are constantly changing, whether it be weight training or diet, they actually get you in worse shape. Your body needs repetition, and it needs that to adapt to its environment. You just don't want to live there in that plateau. Right. So that happens in between three and six weeks. So every four weeks, from behind the scenes, I am changing your diet for you based on what your goals are. You simply, as a client who's using this, have to go to that program. You weigh yourself once a week. You measure three sides on your body, your arm, your waist, and your thigh. I don't even have to look at you, Jerry. I just look at those numbers, and I know where you're at. And I can just I can design that program out uh, four weeks, eight weeks, and 12 weeks based on what your goals are. It's automatically changing for you. It's like having a trainer in a palm of your hand. And all you have to do is show up. You have to do something. We have back-end support that's incredible. It's like having a trainer with you. That's, that's what I'm doing now with this app. I train high-level athletes. I train. I can train the, the person in no-name Nebraska who just wants to be more fit. I can train people who've had strokes on this app. It's that simple. And this is on a website, or you get it from the iTunes store? Or? You can get it from the uh, website. You go to my website, Automatic Diet Plus, yeah. and then we have it as a we have a third party 
as an app. But if you go to that website, Automatic Diet Plus, it talks about the whole program. You can get on it there. It'll 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 start educating about how, why this app is really different from the ones that are, else that are out there. It's dot com or dot net. Dot com. Dot com. Awesome. So I was kind of laughing when you were talking about the cardio and um, training and and diet. So my company's name, which I was created in 2010, uh, yeah, 2010, Bio S3 Training, right? That's the name of my company. That's the name of my YouTube channel. Biosynthesis, the creation of human tissue. The Biosynthetic 3, the Bio S3, are training, cardio, and diet. That's what I've been preaching for. The, I mean, when you said it, I kind of stuck back and I was like, wait a minute. Maybe I actually learned this from Leo's books. Like, it didn't dawn on me until just now. Like, those are the three things that you manipulate to create new muscle tissue and new muscle tissues increase metabolism. Like that's pretty interesting. So yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out and hopefully my viewers will check it out too. And um, yeah, anything you need from me anytime though, you just let me know and hopefully we can have you back on real soon. I love it, man. I've really enjoyed this. I, I've been hearing about you for a long time through Joe and uh, here we are finally talking about this stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I love to get the message out and talk to people and educate. That's what I do. You know, that's, I constantly, I've been doing that for now for about 37 years. So anytime that you want to have me on, listen, it's my honor to be on your show, really. I, I appreciate that so much, Leo. You have no idea. Thank you so much. We'll be in touch real soon. Until Joe, I said hi. All right, man. Take care. Take care, Leo. Bye. Bye-bye.